Hi, welcome back to Aidens Railways. Today we're going to have a look at this Ruston and Hornsby army locomotive that I got a hold of during the full lockdown from Rails to Sheffield. Um, it's not going to be a full review, but I just want to have a look at it, show you one of the items I've managed to get a hold of. I'm going to compare it in size as well to a couple of other locomotives to give you a real grasp of just sort of what real size it is. It is wee, it is small, but it's not it's not tiny. So uh, yeah, we'll get down to the bench and take a closer look. And as if by magic, we're back down here on the bench. Um, so yeah, it's the Ruston Hornsby 48 DS and flatbed wagon, army number 802. Um, that's R3706. Now, they've been out for a fair little while now. Um, it's one of those things when it came out, I found it a bit of a, an interesting item, even when it was announced uh, a year gone January, I think it was January 2019, I think they were announced. Um, I found them interesting, but nothing really, didn't really take my fancy at the time. Um, it wasn't until during uh, what I would call our proper lockdown that... Uh, a lot of us were going online and we were purchasing stuff from various uh, model shops and and so on. Um, I received a, a number of emails from Rails of Sheffield and uh, there was a number of items I did actually buy over a period of time. But uh, these came right down in price, these, uh, these little locos. And because one of them was the uh, Army... A02 one, I thought, wait, well, that's going to fit in with what I'm planning for my layout. I thought it might be interesting to have one. And there's a lot of people out there have got them, there's a lot of people out there have done reviews on them and things like that. I'm going to have a look at this one, uh, show you the one I've bought. Um, I didn't, I paid very little for it. Uh, I, uh, Rails may still have them on sale at the moment. Um, that, that was the biggie. I mean, when I purchased this, I did purchase a couple of other items as well. Um, one of them was actually the Wickham Trolley, and I'm going to get back to that in a moment. But one of the things that struck me about this, and I'm just going to move the box out of the way and bring over the actual contents of it. This saves a lot of the wasted time on the video, but we've got the usual instructions, and we've got this very, very much needed and required body removal thing. Now I'm not going to do that on, on video. Um, yes, I am going to DCC this at uh, some time in the future to go with the rest of them, but uh, not at the moment. Um, one of the things that has actually been brought up quite a lot through a lot of the reviews I've seen online is just how small they are and they'll travel over, you know, uh, points well and all that, and then they're picking up power from the flatbed and all that sort of thing but it is small I'll give it that but it's nowhere near as small as that Wickham trolley so <laughs> I'm gonna put the two together in a moment so you can, you can actually see the difference in size but uh, usual information on the uh, on the actual uh, uh, information sheet on where to lubricate body removal DCC chipping and all that usual stuff so that is gonna come in handy in the future for me. So, um, obviously I'm fully aware of the fact that you can actually run this without its flatbed. Um, there's a few extras there. I don't know if you can make them out. They're mainly just couplings and blanking plates. So there we go. But it is, it is, it is very dinky. It is very small. I'm going to give it that. It is very, very small. Um, but it's not tiny. Now I admit this makes it feel a little bit larger. It, it really does. Um, I don't really want to, I mean, I've se I've watched other reviews and I've seen this. That wire is incredibly thin. Now, if I'm perfectly honest, there is a possibility. I think when the layout is up and running and the track work at least, I may disconnect this and I may just have it run on its own because there's a part of me that's just saying that that is so ridiculously fine and um, it, it is just calling out to be broken at some point but detail wise and things like that inside absolutely 
really great. It's got all the bits and pieces in there. You know, your brake levers, reverse lever, all that sort of stuff. Um, it has actually got quite a, quite a good amount of weight to it. Uh, you know what I mean? The, the, it's it's not going to jump off the tracks anytime soon, I don't think. But all of these like these little hoops here for lifting the loco off the ground and things like that, the handrails incredibly delicate, really are. And I do like the the actual scale of this actual hook here for a three link coupling. Um, same on the rear. And these huge buffers, they are absolutely huge in comparison to that loco. I'm just going to put it down there. Um, realist, really, what this is, it's just to give you an idea. That's that's the size of the Luston and Hornsby. This is your Coca-Cola train. So I'll bring that down a bit. So you can see that huge difference there. So that's just your little bagnell shunter, see? And then you've got the Rustin Hornsby, and then this is the one that really, really throws out the actual, that's the size of the Wickham trolley. So I understand people saying, wow, this is tiny. Um, it's really small, cute even, in comparison to say other locomotives and things like that. I'm not going to get any bigger ones out to try and show, but in a, in that respective of just how small something is that can function, remember the motor for this is actually in this. It's not in the front here. So that, to me, is an absolute feat of engineering. But uh, that'll give you a little bit of scale to see just the size difference between them. But that was one of the big ones that I wanted to uh, to bring up was just, it is small, but it's not tiny. I'll put the Wickham trolley back to one side again. Admittedly, I would imagine the DCC chipping process for this is gonna be a lot easier than me trying to do it with this. Um, Obviously, this is designed to take a chip. The other one isn't, so that's still open to debate as to whether that's going to happen or not, but um, there's got to be a way. Um, as for me separating the two, possibly when the actual layout way, at least the track is a bit uh, uh, down, um, I think that's very likely to happen. Um, this draw bar, I'll, I'll remove it, I'll disconnect the wires, and I'll fit the standard coupling back onto here and, and do the same on this because I don't really see the benefit all the time in running it like that. We've seen on so many other videos that people have managed more than amply to have this running across points and things like that. And it's not exactly gonna be running the full length of the layout. This is gonna be more shunting duties and things like that. So I don't see the point in having that on all the time. Um, the the only downside, the only thing I, I'll be finicky for once is the windows here, it's just one long glazing strip inside. Um, that is the only thing that really, I think it lets it down a little bit with its detail. Um, they could have been separate pieces, they could have easily been separate pieces and fitted um, for that little bit of extra time that it would have taken. But absolutely lovely. Um, I probably wouldn't have bought it at full retail. I, I'll I'll just put it out there right now. I probably wouldn't have bought it at full retail. Um, I bought this. I bought the Wickham trolley. I bought a number of item, other items, but they were on sale. And for me, it's all about bagging a bargain. But at the same time, if it if it financially it represents what it's worth, then I'm I'm happy to do that. And this will fit in with the, the the layout that i'm building for myself so a uh, little bit of research there there was one of these kicking around at longmore at one point <laughs> um my obviously wasn't this one but uh, there was one kicking around there so i know it will fit in with uh the layout i'm planning on building it isn't a longmore layout but it is going to have very similar characteristics but that is that rustin and hornsby it is, I've had it running just very, very briefly on a piece of straight track. And it, I've got to admit, it is incredibly smooth. Mechanism's absolutely lovely. 
Um, they, they, I'll give them they have really jammed an awful lot into a tiny item, but uh, like I'm going to do it again. There's the size comparison, the Wickham trolley against that. So even even though it is a very dinky little item, it's certainly not the tiniest. I'm wondering just how small Hornby or Backman could go now with models. Um, they sort of stayed away from this kind of thing with the really small items for so long and, and, and now they seem to be embracing them a bit more. Um, even the, some of the steam locomotives, little shunters and things like that, they've uh, they've all started to come out of the woodwork now and we're starting to see more of them. So anyway, there you go. Um, it's not an in-depth review, it's just to show you one of the items that I've purchased for my layout to give it a bit of a comparison size-wise in relation to uh, the likes of Ibagnor and obviously my little favourite at the moment, the Wickham Trolley. And I can't wait to get some people in there. There's definitely going to be someone on there. Um, the way I see it is I purchased the Loco and I got I got the wagon as a freebie as far as I'm concerned. I know it's in there to help with uh, conductivity with the rails. But I'll see how it runs once the track's down. If it runs quite happily without the uh, wagon, then I think I'll remove that wagon and it won't be needed anymore. So uh, there we go. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know if you've got one of these. There's quite an, there's an interesting livery in the uh, brown and cream. I do like the look of that, but it just wouldn't fit in with what I've got planned. Um, I'm sure loads of you have got these. Uh, if you have, let me know which ones you've got. And uh, let me know if you've had any problems with or issues with point work and things like that without the actual flatbed truck. Let me know how you fare, think it fares. Does it work better with or without that truck? Or do you feel that's just not really needed? Be interested to know that in the comments. Um, it might give me a bit of uh, information prior to actually uh, doing it myself. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye now.